Hello, good day everyone. My name is Dion. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. You are watching Reptiliatus channel. If you enjoy videos about these awesome reptiles, if you want to learn more about how to keep them, breed them, feed them, then definitely consider subscribing down below. And then afterwards, don't forget to ding that little notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos. In today's video, I thought it would be cool to do a bit of an update on my two Lichianus geckos, Jabba, the male, and Leela, the female. As you guys know, it's now been about two and a half months since we transferred them into their enclosure upgrade. The animals are doing fantastic in there, and well, I have quite a few updates to give you on that. Let's just say it involves procreation. Yes, Jabba and Leela have been busy uh, in the romantic side of things. I just feel so weak. And have actually produced at least one clutch of eggs for me. Now, the reason I chose to do the update now is I didn't get around to showing you guys that first clutch when I first found it. However, last night, I think I noticed that Leela was actually laying a second clutch or digging some test holes. So what I thought I'd do today is show you guys the animals, but first, what we're gonna do is dig around in there and see if we can find a second clutch of Lichianus eggs. Then we'll take a look at the first clutch. Today's question of the day, I wanna ask you guys, do you own Lichianus? And if so, what is their favorite food to eat? Let me know in the comments section down below, and as always, I will give your comments a heart. That was really cheesy, but I tried to do something different. And I'll probably strike up a conversation with you. Let's get right into it. All right guys, so here's Jab on Leela's enclosure and my weird reflection. Now, I decided that for this video, I didn't want to clean everything and perfect it. I wanted things to be really real. I wanted to share the experience of keeping these animals with you guys. They're dirty. I'm constantly going in here and cleaning. And as you've seen in my reptile room cleaning video, which you can follow up here, there's a link to it. It's a lot of work to clean these animals and especially these ones because they produce a lot of waste and their waste is messy. So right here we have my male, this is Jabba. You can see the obvious hemipenal bulge there through the glass and Leela was just under here walking around. I think she was checking out the water dish. I've just missed the enclosure here. So let's see what we can find in here. Let's have a look. Hey Jabba, how you doing buddy? So as you can see, he's doing great here. There is a little bit of bruising on the neck because when they're breeding, the two animals do get a little bit aggressive with each other. We monitor this and if it gets any worse than that, I do apply a bit of ointment and it heals up quickly. Jabba and Leela have been housed together now for the better part of six years without being separated once. So I have had a few comments on my video say, oh, you shouldn't keep your Legionis together unless you're breeding them. And I really disagree because these animals have evolved very similarly to tree hollow nesting birds. These animals will form relatively monogamous pairs and there have been very minimal issues here with these two animals. So. Again, there's a little bit of that, but anyone who breeds lychees knows that that's something to be expected. And it's also something to keep a close eye on because we don't want to get any worse than that. Sometimes females can be a bit more aggressive than the males too, which is a very interesting fact. But as you come along in here, you'll see lots of urates on the glass. Well, the glass and on the cork panel here, uh, there as well. But we can also see and Leela, oh my gosh, she's literally digging right now. Well, we're not going to disturb her. I guess you can tell it, <laughs> this is a pretty raw reaction. I did not realize that she is right there. That is, that is her body, her legs right there, and her tail is there. She is digging to lay a clutch of eggs. So we're just gonna <laughs> close the door here <laughs> and let her do her thing. Jabba's tail isn't in the way. That's good. That was uh, pretty intense. I thought she was just down by the water dish, but she's looking to lay, guys. Holy mackerel. That's super cool. Okay, well, I guess what I'll do is show you how I set up the eggs from the one clutch I already have, and uh, we'll show you how they're progressing through the incubation process. All right. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is prepare a deli cup with some air holes for ventilation, uh, you know, gas exchange. And then what we're going to be placing into the deli cup is perlite. 
Perlite works really well as an incubation media. You can also use vermiculite. So you're gonna fill the container about halfway. Now that the media is prepared, we're gonna make two little divots to nestle our eggs into it. That kind of does it right there. You just kind of make two holes. And then you're just gently going to go ahead and place the eggs into each hole, bearing in mind that you don't want to rotate them from the position you found them as the embryo fixates itself to one side of the egg wall, which is very different to birds that generally rotate their eggs. So keep that in mind, you don't want to rotate reptile eggs. I like to just make sure that the perlite really surrounds them and that we leave a little bit of the surface of the eggs exposed to the open air just for proper gas exchange. We'll be incubating these eggs at room temperature on a shelf. All right, so that looks perfect. We're gonna get our lid on there, and then we're going to mark the container with the date we collected the eggs, so we have sort of a expectation time frame for when they should hatch. I usually find my Lichianus eggs take about 100 to 150 days to hatch. All right, guys, so now we're just gonna do a little bit of an update on these eggs. We are June 15th, and uh, let's candle them and see how they're doing. All right, guys, so what we're actually gonna do now is a small update on the clutch of lychee eggs from Jabba and Leela that was laid on May 5th and see how they're developing. This is a process called candling. So candling as a process is generally used to determine whether or not the eggs that are laid or that you've collected are fertile. Now it's important to remember that sometimes it takes a while before you can actually tell if they're fertile. So don't ever toss eggs away until you're sure. Like moldy eggs can even hatch depending on the situation. Just really give them every chance they deserve. However, the process of candling is where you basically shine a light through the egg to observe if there is any presence of red blood vessels or some embryo developing. And so usually you'll find that a dud or infertile egg glows a bright yellow. So we know these eggs are fertile already, but I'm going to gently lift an egg out, shine a light through it very carefully and show you guys how far along the eggs are developing. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right guys, so we're in the dark. I have my iPhone flashlight. I'm just gonna take an egg carefully, right here. So I have the egg. Now we take the light, and we shine it through like that. So as you can see, it is glowing, it's glowing red. Probably make that out there developing and there's actually a visible embryo in the corner closest to my thumb on the right side there. Fantastic. All right, let's put the egg back. So there's no doubt about it. We experienced a pretty late season here in Ontario this year. For me at least I found that everything's backtracked just by the cold weather we had that lasted really long into the season. So I feel like this first clutch of eggs from Jabba and Leela probably won't hatch for the next mm, 60 or more days at least. I'm gonna say the fact that it's just over a month old. I find that most of my Lichianus eggs don't hatch till at least the 90 to 120, maybe even 150 day mark. So it'll be a while yet before those eggs hatch. Now, you combine that with some warmer incubation temperatures, you're looking at other concerns, but that will obviously speed up the process. I personally like to incubate my eggs at room temperature. I find that putting them on a shelf nicely and then every few weeks just checking on the media to make sure it's moist enough tends to be sufficient and I've had dozens of lychees doing it that way. So awesome. Now there you go guys. That was kind of a funky surprise. I really wasn't expecting Leela to be laying there. So I hope it wasn't uh, I guess not exciting enough if you will. But it's a bit different of a video. I really was looking forward to showing you guys how they're doing, but we really don't want to disturb Leela in her enclosure. She's laying a second clutch of eggs for the season. Super cool. I do actually want to get in there and look around just in case I missed a clutch. I doubt it, but the last thing I want to do is have baby lychees hatch in that tank and not know about it. They will become a meal. So, alas, 
there you go. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I set up my Lichianus gecko eggs for incubation. I'm really looking forward to showing you the babies. If you'd like to see what some of Jab and Lila's babies look like, I have a link up above to a video of new hatchlings so you can see the Lichianus babies and how I set them up. And uh, yeah, that should be good. So without further ado, I want to take some time again to thank you guys so much for your support, for watching my video. And let me know in the comment section down below what you thought about it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always, guys, I look forward to seeing you in another video again soon. Take care.